So now in this video, we're going to look at the RC time constant, this time of a discharging capacitor. The curve is going to look something like that. And we looked at the charging capacitor in the last video. I forgot to uh, mention though, this is tau. It's a little t that uh, it's a little different though. But uh, in any case, it's the Greek letter tau. That stands for time constant in electronics. And it uh, looks like it just came out as T. But in any case, that's the resistance in ohms times the capacitance in farads. And to make the math easy, I'm going to use a 1,000 microfarad. So 1 1,000th one of a farad and a 1,000 ohm resistor. So when you multiply them together, you get 1. So that 1 is going to be 1 fifth of the time, in this case, for the capacitor to discharge. The uh, circuit here, as you can see the capacitor normally, naturally I should say, wants to discharge uh, to, to zero volts. And then when you close the switch, you have a short circuit to instantly charge the capacitor. It's a very brief short circuit though, so it doesn't do any damage. But the uh, capacitor instantly charges, and then as long as you hold the button, some current will go through the resistor based on the resistance. But the main takeaway is once you let go of it, that's when the curve comes into effect. So now, let's uh, build that on the board. It's uh, not too complicated of a circuit. We have the uh, switch here. I talked about it quite a bit in uh, some other videos. I'm trying to keep these as short as possible. So let's just place it in there. And I may kind of pop up for a bit. The board kind of rejects them a, a little bit, but uh, as long as they're in there pretty good, they make a pretty good connection. So now, we have the uh, switch, just because it's the hardest to place for the most part. And on the uh, more negative side of the switch, I think we'll put the capacitor over here. And uh, so, again, it's 1000 microfarad, the same as a millifarad, but for some reason, Capacitors don't usually say millifarad. Usually they go into the thousands of microfarads. The resistor I'm going to put on this side of the switch right there. So that's always connected right there. So we know that the capacitor is completely discharged right now. So now I'm going to pull out the oscilloscope. So here's my oscilloscope and we'll turn it on. This is a low price oscilloscope, DSO shell right there. A lot of people sell the uh, basically the same thing my seller though that I bought this one from I don't think sells them anymore so in any case we can clip directly to the capacitor since uh, the capacitor is pretty good for clipping alligator clips directly to make sure it's the, in there solid if we're just gonna measure a voltage point on the boards or something we can do like I do with the power supply here clip to jumpers and then put the uh, jumpers to the uh, rail so I'm gonna actually move those up there put that one towards the board negative so that they're a little easier to see so in any case right now we are completely discharged power supply is to 5 volts to make it a little more interesting again I'll go to 7 volts so when it comes to the timing the voltage does not matter it's just the voltage the capacitor will go to and uh, let's show that right now so I'll press the button you can see it fully charged instantly and then when I let go, you can see we got this curve. So I'm going to try to pause it right about there. So we already talked about that it, it quickly goes down. And uh, there's one time constant. So it went down about two-thirds of the uh, voltage over a second. And then the next second, it went about two-thirds where it was before. And so we are here. We can go one, two, three, four, five. Now you can see about that point, it's completely discharged right there. So that's the RC time constant. That's the curve. And I uh, like the 555 timer uh, goes on the lower and the upper end while it's charging to do its timing. And uh, so depending on what you're uh, using it for, how you wire it. So the RC time constant is used in quite a few circuits. And uh, we can also do uh, five volts just to show that when the voltage changes, the timing 
still behaves the same. And there you go. I actually have to hold it a little longer for some reason. There must be uh, a little more resistance somewhere than I expect. But in any case, I'm going to let go right there. The button. That's the problem. The button was kind of getting pushed out. So there we go. 5 volts. And now we have our nice little curve there. And again, I'll try to pause it. Right there should be good. That's not too bad. So, again, we got the curve. It's 5 volts now instead of 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And about there before it is uh, fully discharged. So it's probably moving a little bit there. And, in fact, I can move this line up. There we go. That's looking better. That was the problem. So, we weren't uh, showing enough of the line. But there you can see now, we got that one, two, three, four, five. You can tell it's still sloping down a little bit right there. So, in any case, that's it. Thanks for watching. Check out one of the other videos that I'm posting, the subscribe button, and all that. Click the bell. I will see you in the next video.